Welcome back to Fake and Adulthood with me, Candy Joe, and Miss Rita B. <sighs> if you didn't know before, this was supposed to be my podcast shared, but Rita booted me out. I'm here to take over once again. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Fake and Adulthood, where we talk about love, life, and things, and everything in between, and absolutely nothing. Because we don't know what we're doing, we don't have a clue. You've already seen who my co-host is today, because <laughs> clearly my co-host today has some sort of, um, some issues, some issues, don't you? I have a vendetta against her. But my co-host today is Candy Cho! Woo! The audience roars. They're so excited. They're so surprised to see <laughs> you here for the third time. Because this is my show. It's given obsessed, actually. It's given go host. It's given obsessed. It's given you just like being around me. I do like being around you. Yeah. But I'm also the unofficial co host of the show. Yes. So, okay, do you know what? Let's just say what the story is mm. so we can understand why you believe in your heart that you are the official. To believe in my unofficial co-host. So what happened, guys, is that long, long time ago in Bethlehem, no, a long time ago, we were meant to do a podcast, weren't we? Yeah, it was actually supposed to be three of us. Yeah, with Uche. me, Candy, and Uche we were meant to do a podcast. We were on the phone trying to figure out the names, mm. and then we didn't really land on a name, mm. and then Uche was a bit busy, so mm. she couldn't like lock it in. And then me and Candy were like, oh, maybe we should do a podcast, right? Yeah. But then I was like, ooh, Friendship. Oh yeah, Rita always had this thing. She was like, what if we're on the podcast together and we stop being friends? Yeah. And I just thought, but what if I make money on this podcast? What's more <laughs> important, friendship or the money? And Give I me chose- dollars. <laughs> and I chose, <laughs> and I chose friendship because I think Boo. friendship's very important. So the only way I could really like get you to like understand was to say that she would be my unofficial regular co-host on my podcast. And here she is. She's back again. Third episode down. Let's go. As you know, it's a bit of a miracle that I'm here today, isn't it? Why would I do? Well, you know what one happened to me. No, you know what happened to me. When they squeezed your leg that one time. I was injured last week. I had the accident with my leg. She scratched her leg. It wasn't a scratch. It's a tiny scratch. And it's it was like scratch. three weeks ago. It was last week, Saturday. Mm. Unfortunate thing happened to me, guys. So last week, Saturday, I was going to get a coffee. Um, it was actually last week, Friday. I was rushing to get a coffee. And then as I opened the cupboard, right, the cup basically slipped out of my hand. It then hit the pan that was on the, the dish dryer thing, hit the pan, hit the table, and then shh, on my leg. Mm. It Blood wasn't that big. gushing everywhere. Mm. It was really, you know. So me being here today is a, you know. A miracle. We thank God, you know, that I made it. You would never survive in the olden days. <laughs> you would be cooked. <laughs> Little scratch. Mind you, she taught me about antiseptic. There's not a time that I've had an injury that I put anything on it. I just wash it in it and give it to God. I hear that, but obviously I had to get a bunch of, you know, equipment. For, for a that. little nick. You know, Sorry, I'm wrong. Yeah, you are wrong. It because was gigantuous. It was and like do you know what? Actually, when I told you about the accident, you should have come over to the house <laughs> to, to, to look after me or something, but you didn't well, do anything. You just laughed. And I just, you know what? I'm glad that you're here to really address I, it. I laughed and told her that in the Bob Marley film, he didn't... Yeah, I know what you're going to say. His wound didn't heal on time and it turned out that he had cancer. And I said to him, maybe you have cancer. So and she didn't think it was funny. Is that funny? Did any of you laugh? I laughed. <laughs> <And there's laughs> one that I'm still laughing. But you don't have cancer, so. Anyways, guys, you know how I like to start my show. Oh, our complaint of the day. Complaint of the day! Because <laughs> I feel like complaints should be normalized, okay? Mm. So I have a complaint of the day, and this actually came to me yesterday. Mm. I was actually stuck. I had a lot to complain about, but I felt like I'd already complained about it before. So I felt like I needed something new to complain about. But my complaint of the day is very, very simple. And it's a matter of respect. And I think we're coming to a time where a lot of people are lawless and a lot of people are becoming more and more 
disrespectful in our community and it needs to be addressed. Okay. Mm-hmm. My complaint of the day is this. Unsolicited voice notes <laughs> from people you do not talk to regularly. Mm. When did we become a community that instead of you to send a regular message, right? You just think that out of the blue, you could just send me a voice note and I don't even speak to you. Was it a man? It was a woman. Whoa. You sent me a voice note at midnight. We don't even talk. There's no hello before. There's no, oh, by the way, I'm just going to send you a quick voice note. Nothing. So because you have my number, you just think you can just send a voice note anyhow at any time. I think that this is an outrage. And actually, it's a level of, it's disrespectful. Mm. Yes, it's disrespectful and it's unacceptable, okay? And it's after hours. The only time, a stranger, you're practically a stranger. Your, why do they have your number if they're a stranger? Okay, they're not a stranger, stranger, mm. yeah. But we don't talk like that for you to send me a voice note. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And it leads me on to my other complaint, which is linked, broadcast messages. I just think if you send me a broadcast message telling me to listen to your mixtape, that is the reason why I will never listen to that mixtape in my life. What was the vibe? I just don't think WhatsApp feels personal to me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it does. And that is my complaint of the day. Okay. My complaint is when you want to message someone, they ask yourself, are we close enough for me to send a voice note? Do I want to hear your voice? Mm. Ask yeah, yourself that question. I, I don't give a heck. If I <laughs> Do I want to hear your voice? Ask yourself that. Before you send me a voice note, in the middle of the night, I'm thinking that it's my lover. Do you get it? I'm excited thinking it's my crush. Why? You ain't got no lover. <laughs> Continue. It might have been my lover that's in my head. <laughs> anyway, that's my complaint of the day. What's yours? My complaint of the day, it goes to you, Garrick Theatre. Every time I go to your place, you put on rubbish. Bad actors, bad script, GCSE level content. You will be dealt with, closed down, today. Me and Rita just saw a play, awful. One woman show, I'm not going to say her name because I don't want to give her too much heat. Terrible, terrible, and terrible. That for black boys thing, terrible. What else have we seen in Garrick? It's just terrible. And you got me all the way in Charing Cross doing what? Rotten. And when I was laying in that theatre, I just thought, I could be sleeping right now. Or I could even watch Vampire Diaries, and Vampire Diaries ain't good. That tells you the level of rubbish that that theatre produces. But what I, what I will say is go to Bushwick. Is it Bushwick? Is it... Bush Theatre. Bush, Bush Theatre. Shifters. Mwah. Kissing. Mwah. Tossing. Mwah. <laughs> Everything good. If they add a shirtless scene to it, even better. Give it 9 out of 10. Fantastic. Just add a shirtless scene. And that's your complaint of the day. Yeah. I ain't got no... I feel like I've had, like, a good week. Actually, my, my next complaint is ban male authors. I'm doing 75 hard. I've been reading every day. I picked up a new book called like The 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 Damned of the Vampire, The Vampire of the Damned, whatever, by Jay, whatever his name is, terrible. I'm like, why I don't like this book? <laughs> then I looked, I said, Mel with a hair. When women write, off the bat, it's interesting, there's lust, there's tension, there's something to hook you. This man keep describing war stuff. I don't know what the hell he's talking about and I don't care. Where is the sex scene? Can you have sex on this podcast? Where's the sex scene? You can't have sex on the podcast. No. Oh, but you can say it? Yeah. yeah. Add some lust. <laughs> Page one, somebody got to be lipsing. sync okay. You understand? Because okay. I'm not enjoying it. Okay. And that's it. Ban me authors 2024. This is a safe space. And these are your opinions. And whether I agree with them, or not. But do you think I have good taste? This is your opinion. That means you don't think. But you're wrong about the theatre thing. We've discussed this. So which one do you prefer, Garrick or Bush? It's not even about the theatre. It is. It's not, because I've been to the Bush before. No, actually, the two shows I've watched at the Bush were very good. good. But yeah, I've been to different theatre. Where's that going to be? Soho Place. And that was at the Bush. 
Oh, this, the Before. football one. Mm -hmm. See, Bush is producing good stuff. Yeah, but you know, my friend is one of the associate directors there and he's got fantastic taste. Just wanted what, to. Bush? Shout Daniel out to Bailey, him. shout out Daniel Bailey. What's the lead in that football one's name? I can't actually remember. Is it really football? I don't know how to even say his name. Is it the guy from Sex Education. The black one. No, I need his name. Oh my gosh. Sex Education. I don't, who do I, how do I cast? Yeah. Look what this girl's got me doing, man. Guys, it's absolutely ridiculous. She's really out here, got me Googling. Kid, Kedar William Sterling? Someone link me to Kedar <laughs> William Sterling in a world where I didn't have a boyfriend. Just put the boyfriend thing to the side. Someone link me to him, yeah? Just put the boyfriend thing put to the, the side. Put the boyfriend to the side. I mm -hmm. love him, shout at him. Someone link me. Are you done? I want him. Okay. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Safe space, so um, I will later on, we'll discuss the theater thing, but it's a safe space. And this is your complaint of the day. <laughs> that is so my we're going to give it to you. Yeah. My new thing is community complaints. And I've been sent in some complaints from the community. Thank you guys. Let's go. <laughs> so uh, number one complaint is people reach the train tube barriers and suddenly remember to bring their phone cards out upon exiting. Then they end up holding up the whole line, angry, angry face. I hear it. I don't agree with that. What do you mean? They should have the card out before they yeah, get but there. But if you have like more than one card on your thing, because I do and it's like hard shifting. I just, as I'm walking, I just press it and I, I get the card ready. There's people behind, like why are you what now getting there? They're like, they're old? Oh, oh, oh. old people. Yeah, we've got ageism on the cast. <laughs> I love old people. Shout out, you guys. Shout out, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Second complaint is the rent prices for a room is a killer, even out of London now. Why am I paying £800 to share a bathroom and a kitchen with a stranger? Tea. I'm basically paying a man's whole mortgage and the other person paying the same amount in the other room. And that's all profit. T. T. You ate with that. You, this is tea, and this is a big problem. Yeah, rent is literally to its bring back social housing, it's just so expensive, and yeah. it's so sad because I feel like people aren't able to feel like the adult that they are. Yeah, I feel like a home is a fundamental right, so you, you know, shouldn't be priced out of being able you to live be, by yourself. You shouldn't be priced out of living by yourself, it's yeah. actually ridiculous. Like, you're a grown adult, you've got you a great job, hard. you work hard, and yeah. then you have to share your kitchen. With, with a stranger. And Raff. Yeah, not even a stranger. The worst strangers, drug addicts, <laughs> and meanies, and silent people. It's fasting. It's just not cool, man. Mm -mm. It's not cool. That's a great, great complaint, honestly. Oh, God help us. And then I have a community dilemma. Mm, we got a dilemma. Is the first yeah. dilemma we had? Have you done dilemmas before? Not with you. I've been doing it though. Boo. <laughs> I got to catch up on the pod. <laughs> I'm watching the toilet one next. <laughs> okay. So the community dilemma is, the first one, this is very short and straight to the point. When is the, when is the correct amount of time to pass to ask someone out at a new job? You work with them. Yeah. The time is never. And why do you think that? Because I've dated someone I worked with and after like the turmoil, it was the dumbest idea I've ever had. Really? If you break up, they are there every day. Mm. Have you contemplated that? Mm. Or if you're shag and he just disappears, he will be there and it will be mad awkward. Mm. Unless you really think this is the love of your life, don't do it. Yeah, because that's what I'm thinking. I mm. think like if it's the love of your life, yeah, you got to give if it a If you've got like a Brad Pitt, go for it. <laughs> but if you ain't laying. Yeah, but it, laying and love of the life is different. If he's just if laying. If it's Brad Pitt, love of my life. If it's just if it's just leng, then you need to weigh up the pros and cons because it's actually true. It can be very very awkward when it comes to work because you have to go there every day. You have to see their face. You can't even do that thing like when someone's annoying you and you're like, I just don't want to talk to them. I don't want to see them. No, you can't like do that. If you don't text them back, they're there. They're right there. It is it's a little awkward. bit awkward. But one thing about me, I'm gonna take a new babes. <gasps> And he brings her a work party. Oh my God, that is the worst. Or he has a new babe and you just know he has a new babe. Or if he shags someone day. else from the office. Oh, it's, There's so many levels to how bad this could go. It's just not worth it. Like, <sighs> But it could go good. Mm. And you guys could have lunch together and stuff. Yeah, that's like once in a blue moon. That's quite though. nice. That ain't realistic. It happens though. Yeah, but would it happen to this person? Who mm. knows? 
They can go um, for one drink though to see if there's like a real yeah, life look into connection. Yeah, looking eyes, see if the look vibe is there. But eyes. how do you know the vibe is more like? Is it lust or is it love? This is it. This is it. Is it love or is it lust? It's very know. hard to tell the difference. Yeah, if they're really sexy and you don't, can't remember anything they said, that means there's lust. That's I tea, actually. That's actually <laughs> tea. If like, yeah, if all your, co yeah, that's yeah. actually, yeah. If you guys can't like really talk. Mm. And you just keep thinking, but he's very length. And when he talks, you're just looking at his yeah, lips. Yeah, you're just looking at all his <laughs> eyes. And Are you looking at his like, eyes? You're looking at those arms, you're like, yeah, oh, strong. Need me there. You're like, strong arms. Like, I need that. <laughs> I'm trying to see for myself. But <laughs> it can still be the love of your life, okay? Mm. You got to lust after the love of your life, you know? Tea. So, you know. Okay, second dilemma. <laughs> I feel like I know what you're going to say to this, but anyways. Dated, we dated previously, mm. broke up, no contact whilst in the same friendship group. But now we are friends again and I'm starting to catch feelings. What mm. do I do? Give it up. <laughs> Never gonna happen. Oh, why'd you say that? Because if you broke up yet yeah, and he's been around you for a few months, men who want you will find a way to get you back. Like they'll open their big mouths and tell you. Mm. He's obviously not feeling the same way. Sorry, girl. He's probably thinking, sweet, she's over me. We're friends. It's not awkward. Let mm. me just vibe. And you're in the corner, like lusting over him and you're gonna fall over him and it's not gonna work. Like, bro, if he really wanted you, he'd have you. He can tell you fancy him. Still, you're giving him the ass. You don't want it. That is actually tea, you know. He might have thought, okay, we're finally good again. Yeah, he's like, sweet, we're, we're good. in the same friendship group. Now we can be cool. We can just hang out and be normal. Mm. And now and you're like, mm. you look good. Take up your time. Starting to catch feelings. Do you know what? I think that you need to like pull back. One thing about Rio, she won't give you the worst advice. No, she does though. If she's the one that's starting to catch feelings, then she needs to stop hanging oh, out yeah. with him. You need to stop hanging out and just forget he Yeah, exists. you need to just stop hanging out with him. You need to like, do you know what's important, right? To give boundaries. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes we think that we're stronger than we are. Mm. So she's thinking, oh, I don't want to be a problem. Mm. We're in the same friendship group. It's cool. I can still see him. It's not an issue. But you're catching feelings. So the yeah. best thing to do actually is to separate yourself so you protect yourself. Because it's not a bad thing that you're catching feelings. It makes it sense. Is. You used to like him. It's easy for you to start liking someone again. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Boundaries. Boundaries. Pull back. Mm. Don't hang out with them for a couple months. Get your mind right. Meet someone new. Get strong. And then you guys can be friends. I don't want to be friends with a guy. If I like fancy you or we were together and now we're friends, why would I want to be your friends? We were lovers. Do you know what I mean? Like, how do no, you No, I don't back? know what you mean because I'll be friends with anyone I've shagged. No, I can be friends, but it's like, if, we're in, if we were really, like, I need time. No, you just need to find someone hot. Yeah, but that's why I need time to find that someone hot. It you one week. Go to any of the events. No. Yeah, everybody's sexy in London. Everybody's sexy. Well, Bring me to a DLT. I'll find a man for me. I just really think that I need space to rejig my mind. If they were like the love of your life, then yeah. Even, yeah, if you really like someone, you just can't next week. Okay, we're friends now. So we used yeah, to like hold hands like and then now, now we're like yeah, friends you're 100 now. Yeah, you're 100% right. I Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, I need time. Like, all right, cool. Let's separate for a bit. Let me reset my mind. We're friends, 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 friends. But the thing is, whenever they say they're friends, they still flirt with you a little bit. So it's like, bro, like... Are we really friends? Are we really friends? Don't give me the eye then, innit? Do you know what I mean? Keep a top on. Like... <laughs> what? <laughs> I was with me. you that I was like, <laughs> so, huh? when, did the, when did the top come off? I'm like, you know, I like the models. Yeah, yeah, you do. You do. You like them tall and lean. I like models. Yeah, tall and but lean. But they're not good men. They don't have a lot of money. The yeah. love will last. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> let's talk TV shows. Because we always talk TV shows. Mm. So let's just talk like, what are two things that you would recommend and two sh and two shows that are like the worst thing you've seen. Two that are, the only show that I think right now is banging is Shogun. What network is it on? Disney I watch Plus. It. Is it D Disney Plus? Yeah, because mm -hmm. nobody wants to give me their freaking account, <laughs> so I gotta watch it illegally. <laughs> that show is banging. The only problem is it has like a white savior, but the white savior is kind of hot, so I'm gonna allow that. Mm -hmm. Storyline, directing, acting, everything is amazing. If you haven't seen Shogun yet, go and see it right now. What else did I watch? Did I the only other thing I'm watching Vampire Diaries. 
Oh yeah, going oh no, no 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 the hundred the Korean show it's back it's for like bodybuilders and trainers it's a battle of the fittest like cardiovascular health bodybuilding swimmers firefighters trying to see who's the best mm. I just love that show because I'm really into fitness mm. and then they like do different challenges like they even did like a one on one fighting battle and it's like they put you up against some big guys. Well, my favorite challenge was they did like 10 minutes of running, mm -hmm. but it's on a machine and you have to run yourself. Could you run for 10 minutes straight? I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could. Yeah, I don't know if I could. But you have to be like in the top 50, so you need to keep a pace, which, so you just kind of have to be good at breathing. So I just mm. feel like that show is absolutely amazing. It's season two, it's on Netflix. I love Korean shows. Yes. Okay. What did I think was bad? Uh, you both fine. Yeah. <gasps> Yeah, but I'm gonna say my two shows that I'm gonna recommend and then we'll talk <laughs> about the shows that we hate. Oh my God. The two shows that I'm gonna recommend is The Gentleman on Netflix. Is that just cause you think Theo James is hot? Theo James is very hot, but it's actually very good. Is I feel it? like Guy Ritchie, I feel like he did his thing with a director. He does one thing and does it well. Yeah, it's and it's fantastic. Do mm. you know what I mean? Because it's, it's weird because it's an action show, but then it's also comedic mm. and they make stuff like, that should be quite serious, but then it's also like quite funny mm. and it's very laddie. You know what I'm saying? You know, with a little Cockney accent, my hair. Mm. The other side. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Um, it's very laddish. Do you know what I mean? With a little Cockney accent and stuff like that. You see you're doing a uh, Cockney accent. Yeah, and it's mm. and he's a gentleman. Well, it's not really Cockney actually. It's quite posh, mm. but that's the gentleman, isn't it? Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I just think it's a very good show. It's interesting from the beginning. The shots are interesting. The storytelling's interesting. The acting is really, really good. Like I believe it. I believe the world that they've created. I was just really into it. I was like, this is such a good show. So The Gentleman on Netflix, I would definitely recommend that. But then another show that I really enjoyed that some people didn't want to watch because, you know, they had different expectations. But Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I thought I was banging. I thought that was banging. That was a show. I thought it was people fantastic. People said it wasn't good. I'm like, you ain't got no taste. They haven't got good taste. Yeah. I thought that show was fantastic. I, I thought I was good. Right? I felt like the acting was good. I love the premise of mm. like two people who don't forced know each other. Marriage, forced yeah. into a marriage. I love that. And they fall in love. I love what? Mm. Romance? Yeah. That's good romance. I, I thought I was good. Great. And I love the way it was shot. I love the grade of it. Yeah, it, I like the scenes. It was so scenes. interesting. It was so interesting. Yeah. And I believed it. I believed that they were, and I liked that. She was real good. Real good. And I love that they don't look like they they can kill. Yeah, she doesn't look like she can kill. Do you Donald I mean? can get away with it because he's like built. Yeah, but, but I liked that they don't look. Do you know what I mean? You could watch them like on yeah, the street. Yeah, you could see them and you wouldn't suspect you anything. You would never suspect them. And I liked yeah. that, actually. But I thought they were a bit of dummies. Remember when they met the couple, the other Mr. and Mrs. Smith? And like, they were like, let's show you a house. And let's show you where everything is. I was like, is your brain awake? I was like, are you guys actually for real? Why would you just, as people that you, you're the CIA, you're spies, mm. like, and you just trust people. But I think it's because they didn't have, like... Any friends. You had to cut everyone off, so it's, like, the first yeah. inkling of a friend. You're like, oh, I really want this to be real. Yeah. But I was just like, bro, this ain't real. And it was so deep. I love the themes explored, yeah, about, like, the whole, like, being scared to love thing. Mm. I thought that was really nice, the way they kind of weaved that in. Like, you've got this character who's, like really strong and get stuff done and she's really, do you know what I mean? And, but then she's just got this like emotional vulnerable struggle side, yeah. and vulnerable side. And like, he really loved her, but then she was so scared of it. Yeah, she didn't believe it. She didn't believe it. She felt mm. like she wasn't good enough to be loved. Mm. I just thought that was just, you know? But I wish they didn't kill that first couple so far. So that woman was very hot. She was very hot. Bro. Yeah. She they was said, leg. we need a hook. Yeah. And, and I was hooked after that. I said, who there? <laughs> She looked real good. Yeah, she was laying. Her face was perfect. Yeah, she was good. So yeah. that was like the conventional mystery. Yeah, they were yeah. Like, we'll add that they could exactly because they could have gone that route. Yeah, but they were like, we need actors, not just sexy actor. And I think Donald Glover is a fantastic actor. He's actually fantastic at everything he does. Like, have yeah. you listened to his music? Yeah, he's a great artist. I think he's like, very he's talented. Good well rounder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good well rounder. So yeah, those are my two shows that I'll be like, yeah. <sighs> and the show, the worst shows that we watched together. Guys. One of the worst shows. That we've ever watched, actually. And it looks like it would be good. It looks like it would be fantastic. What's it called? Oh, Mary and... Mary and George. Mary and George. With Nick Nicholas Gold, Gold scenes. Yeah. Man, man, very sexy. Only plays a gay. Yeah. But love him. It was really bad. Julianne really Moore, love her. Yeah, but it was really the bad. The show, 
porn. It was basically <laughs> porn, guys. They said gay porn for one hour every episode. Yeah. No storyline. Yeah. <laughs> you will be lip sync. People will be watching your bum. Yeah, it was. That's it. And it's just, it looked like it would be so good. It looks good. Produced well. Yeah. Color grading. Honestly, great channel. Looks, great Usually, channel. they have great shows. But that's this show one, awful. Yeah. But also, shout out to Sky, because Curb Your Enthusiasm, you haven't watched that I show. I love Curb Your Enthusiasm with Larry David. Are you crazy? You love it? I watched that like 10 years ago. The he new season. Oh, they got a new season. Yeah. Oh, it's so oh, good. He's so funny, Sky comedy, though. it's so good. He went to that wedding, sliced the cake, and they were like, oh, who <gasps> ate the cake? And he's like, dum, 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 dum. I used to watch that all the time. It's so good. The new season, the last episode, episode but how 12. How is he still going? It'd be like 12 this is last, million seasons. No, yeah, it's 12. Yeah, he need to wrap that up. Yeah, this is the last season. He must be tired. He must be he so He was tired. old as hell 10 years ago. How and he's he still now? old. Does he look the same? He still look the same. <laughs> I'm had, like, this man is so old. <laughs> he but white the, hair I feel like ago. that's what makes it so funny, though. Mm. I like that they're all old. Because yeah. it's like old oh, people complaining. Because they still have his um, best friend, the Jewish one, the big one. Yeah. Oh, I need to watch that. No, the new season is, is hilarious. Mm, episode 12 her. of season 12. I don't know what it was about that episode, but it just had me crying. Mm. Because his reactions was just like me. Like, I would have the same reaction. Like, there was a scene where, like, he's, is he sleeping? It's literally 3 a.m. Someone randomly calls saying, Larry, Larry, so-and-so had a stroke. He's like, okay. Who? He had a stroke last night. He's like, who? And he puts the phone down. He's like, why the fuck would she call me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then they put him in a group chat. And he's just so annoyed because he's like, I don't even know who this man is. Like, why are they calling me? But just the reactions is so natural. Sick show, man. Yeah, we love you, Larry David. We love you, Larry David. I mean, <laughs> I was going to ask you about your theatre issues. But you already, you already said that, that as your complaint of the day. I will say, like, it's really important guys, for me to say this, yeah. The show that Candy didn't like, not for black boys, because I loved it, but I've only oh, seen it with a first woman class. Lesbian show. It wasn't a one woman lesbian show. That's what it felt like when I was Even there. if it was, right? No, I love the lesbians, don't get it me It wasn't wrong. even that, like, it was a one woman show, right? And it was about this girl who had just lost her sister, and she was a teenager, she's a teenager, and she's going through the process of that grief. And during that time of the grief, her parents also get divorced, and she's going through that. She loses her virginity, so she's going through that, and there's just a lot that's going on. My only feedback of that show, before I get into that, is that Candy missed half an hour of this show. If you've ever been to the theater, you will know half an hour in the theater is like two hours. It's like missing the first season of a show and you just lock in and you don't even know what's happened. So that's number one, yeah. Number two, the beginning of the show was comedy. By the time you got there, my girl was going through it. Do you know what I mean? And that's why it was very deep and she was upset and a lot was going on, okay? Mm. So that's my feedback about that show, but it was all right, it was a good show. It was mind-numbingly boring. It wasn't, it was really and good. And so depressive and she was it stupid wasn't. from top to bottom. She went on a train to, at 16 to Brighton to re meet a random guy she ain't never met before. I mean- I don't want to talk about what happened after. But I just thought, does that sound a good idea? It's like, if There's you're raised so in African many household, teenagers that those people that. are riff and raff. I was born in Nigeria. Why the hell would I get on a train to a random place where a man I ain't met before? That's how I'll die. But that's there's so many teenagers that do that. Wake your brain up then. Like I remember being up? I remember being a teenager. Would you have got on a train to no, go? No, I wouldn't. Look, I wasn't even allowed to go to parties. That was one time. Like yeah. that's how I am. I wasn't allowed to do this stuff. No, so why I would I do it? Do you know there's a time, yeah, I got invited to a party, right? I was so excited, right? The invitation said that the party started at six o'clock, right? So obviously my dad drops me there at six o'clock, right? It started. But memory. it's literally getting set up. So I helped them set up the whole party. Okay. I set out all the all the cakes, all this. I set it all up. Yeah. And your dad picked you up to take you. It was now nine o'clock. Mm. People started arriving. Mm. Who calls me? My dad. Mm -hmm. I said, What's he calling me for? How do it's you time to time? go home. Like fifteen, sixteen. Why would you be there past nine? But everyone else got there. Are they age mates? Go they home. weren't my age mates. They were in my year. Their parents are mumus. They were in there and, and I had to go home. So I basically helped set up the whole thing. And it wasn't even my dad that picked me up. It was even my uncle. And my uncle, I was begging my uncle. My uncle was like, no, your dad yeah. said it's time to, go. to go. home. So I basically set up the whole party and then I left. You're lucky you went to a party because my child at 15 ain't going to no party. You're not going to let your child go to a party? No. Why you, not? Are you uh, alcoholic? You can what? party when you're 22. Are you joking me? Why when you was your first party? party? I never liked partying. <laughs> so when was the first time you went out? Probably when I was like, don't do. I didn't even go out in uni. But you didn't have a lot of friends. I had friends. And they didn't invite you out? 
were in uni. Nah, because they knew I wouldn't go. So even in secondary school, you didn't go out with anyone? College? No, I went to a quinceanera. What's that? Latino, when you turn 15, you have your party. What? what? My friend was Latino. I went to a quinceanera, does it? Boy, I need to be outside for I told her I was at home reading my book. Wow. That's really interesting. But my sister used to be partying out like a wild animal. That's why she has scars all over her leg, because she was doing stuff. I had no interest in doing things. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't allowed to go to parties, parties, but I did. Sorry, mom and dad. Um, there were times where my parents thought I was at a sleepover, but I was definitely I didn't do sleepover at a sure. party. Yeah. Mm -mm. My, there was one friend that my parents allowed me to like stay over at her house. And that was the friend that had, was the most lawless. <laughs> That's why my children like, also not have friends. When you go to her house, like no one was stressing. <laughs> no one's like adding any stress or doing anything. Like we were just allowed to go out, live our lives. So every time I tell my parents, I'm going to her house, Crystal, shout out Crystal. Um, we we're having a great time. There's one time we partied until like 6 a.m. 6 a.m. Yeah. At, at what age? Uh, I was 16. And then from that party, I actually went to church. Why were you at 6 a.m. at 16? Well, we found this party. So basically, yeah, in the ends, yeah. Like, what's going on? Sorry, I just need to grab water. I'm very dehydrated. You can cut this all out. I'm so sorry. I just can't stay here thirsty. You ain't touched a little bit. You ain't nothing. No. Oh, I'm so sorry. Gosh, you're such a chaotic guest. <laughs> Jeez. That AD, AD, what's it? What have you got? AD. Yeah, really be jumping. Anyways. When? When I was like in secondary school, I was like the party girl in terms of like, we would get on the bus and we will listen out for music. Mm. And then when we hear music, mm. so actually, let me tell this properly. We'll get on a bus and then we'll get off the bus and, and we'll when walk on the street. Right, and we'll listen out for music, and when we now hear music, we'll enter the party. But and then I would you call don't know all the people. no, and then I'll call all the so I knew all the the hood guys. So then they'll be like, "Rita, where's the party at today?" And then they'll call me. I'll let them know where the party's at, and then everyone will then come. To that the party. sounds insane. Yeah, we found a banging party in like Forest Hill one time. Another one in this place called Leftbridge. The Leftbridge one was a yardy party. And that's why it went on till 6 a.m. And no one questioned who you were? No. That's crazy. It, like, we'll just go in and then party. And that was my first yardy party, my first wine. I was like, wow. Um, no, no letting go, no holding back. Because you are. And that was like my first I dance, 6 a.m. But I had church. So I had to go to my friends, 6 a.m. And obviously we've been drinking and stuff. Sorry, mom and dad. And you I drink and stuff, went to church. And I was praising God heavy on that day, yeah? And everyone was, like, everyone was like, wow, Lamide is really like, Rita's really into it, Rita's really into it. It's because I was drunk. <laughs> yeah. You're so unserious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I was like. Um, yeah, those are the parties, man. But I let my kid party. Yeah, man, they're gonna party anyway. Mm, yeah, it's better when you have a formative brain cell to guide yourself to yeah, party. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you're young and you ain't got nothing going up, you can't At least 16, I think Absolutely 16. not. Thank you so much. Do you man. think in this generation, you're gonna be able to stop? The way I'll beat but them in the head. But, oh, and they'll now put you on whatever go, app will be there. You go to Nigeria. App. You think you can, do you can think you that you can TikTok? send? My child is gonna be like Matilda. Don't worry about me. You're gonna have no interest. You just read from one tonight. There's no <laughs> TV for you. iPad, mm-mm. You don't know. You don't have fun. Go wow. to your bed and read, didn't it? You're gonna be so strict. Yeah, then they'll have a good life. But then we both have different kind of vibes, and look, we're still here together in this room. So does it really I'd matter? I'd rather have a me than a me. There's nothing wrong with you, but I need a child who's very controlling and self-controlled and can change themselves. I'm very self-controlled. You're like a banshee. What's that? Ah! You're like me. a wayward woman. Me. I nah, really is actually a good girl. I'm actually way worse. Than exactly. <laughs> so where do we go from here? <laughs> yeah, but I could have been raised. Let me not say that because my mom's gonna cry. Oh yeah. Yeah. Your mom yeah. Next topic. <laughs> <laughs> Shout if you out were, to my mama. If you were on death row, mm. what would be your last meal? That's a ooh. okra or bono with mixed meat, eba. I'd also have a meat pie. I'd have a vanilla cheesecake. I'd have coconut water, Pringles crisps, one blueberry muffin, 
with a side of lobster pasta. Wow. You've thought about this? No, I just saw so foods I haven't eaten in 75 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, I wanted to eat a blueberry muffin so bad. And I said, you got one day left. Just hold it. Wow. But I just eat all the things I love. Mm. And like, I don't eat Nigerian food often, but it's my favorite food. Mm -hmm. So, and that okra bono. Yeah, it hits. The sleep that you get straight after that, yeah. I mean, you're, I mean, it's just you're death finished row, it's your last day. day so. Yeah. But I'd never be on death row because why would I commit a crime? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you would, not never worth it. yeah you would never commit a crime, no. to be honest. Unless I didn't, if I was homeless, I'd commit a crime so I could have a house. Would you? If you're homeless for three years, you better quickly hurt someone. Because they basically house you in prison, innit? You get a nice prison, get food, you have phone, you have TV, vouchers, you get your job. You read books all day and do nothing. Not that I'm saying prison is good, but yeah, homeless or prison, they made a prison. Damn. What a way to think. I've thought about it. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds like you have. That makes sense. Yeah. What would be my last meal? I think it's a, it's, I'm torn you between... Juice, uh, huh? Juicy jerk, what's it called? Oh, the jollof. That's you lot's favourite. The, the um, jollof. What's it called? Uh, the place. Food Junkie. We love Food Junkie. Whenever in Rita's ends, we're like, bring food us junkie. Food Junkie. Yeah, Food Junkie. Matter of fact, I might go there and I'll get some Food Junkie. Yeah, Food Junkie. I need some Food Junkie. Yeah, Food Junkie. Do you know what? I feel like I'm torn between pounded jam or rice and stew and plantain. But rice and... Mm, but what about turkey with it? Do you like it with turkey? Turkey is nice. Right. Turkey seasoned good. Put some lamb chops on the side. If it's my last meal, give me 10 meals in one meal. I don't want one meal. I want 10. I'm just like, if it's my last day on earth, yeah, I'm just like, I don't even give a heck. Can, like, what's like, the bro, point? Like, bro, I'm and everything. But I'm like, do I, would I even want to eat? Yeah. Like, I never, whenever I've watched those films, they're like, oh, yeah, he's having his last meal. I'm just like, if I know I'm going, I'm just thinking someone might change their hungry. mind. They're not going to change their mind. You might be lucky then the last minute. They're like, hold on. Stop. We've got Stop. new evidence. We've got new We've got new evidence. She's not guilty. She didn't Open do the it. Gates. And imagine they're, like, they're banging oh, and it's, they're oh. like, it's too late. And you're like, oh, oh my God. You'd be cooked. Yeah. Because so many people go to like prison and they didn't do it. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like I would have hope up until the end. Oh, that's crazy. I mean, my future. I wouldn't be hungry. I would not have an appetite. Let's just commit crimes that aren't punishable by death, but give us homes if we're homeless. Yeah, I would just not like commit mini crime mini robbery. Burglary, give me three years. Burglary. Yeah, I think you're after, innit? I think something lighter than that, man. Just But that's why there's constant reoffenders. Because they don't have homes. Yeah, that's and they have nothing really, when they come back out. That's really so sad. You might as well just The prison system's actually quite awful. In this country, yeah. Yeah, it's really bad. That's really awful actually. That made yeah. me quite sad. Oh, you have such a soft heart. That's really sad. Um, if you were to be reborn into a different family <laughs> at a different time. Oh, not this time. Yeah, what would you choose? I'd be a black panther. Really? Yeah, it's a cool time, isn't it? Mm. Like you're freedom. You definitely die young. Yeah. Yeah. You probably die like thirty three. But I won't be with like um Malcolm X or Martin Luther King. One of their like hoes in it. Mm. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I get to be with the Foo Fighter, be in the iconic pictures, be on the side, then but die why? and come back. Yeah, but why would you choose to be their hoe and not just like one of the, the people. Because I think Coretta's still alive right now, ain't she? Yeah. I wouldn't be alive that long. That's traumatic. Oh yeah, all just that, take me all out, those memories. It? That all your friends are dead. Yeah. All the things you've done were basically meaningless. Like, there's no real change. There's no change. You might as well die with the hope that you yeah, change something. Yeah. yeah. And you also got to chop Malcolm X. Oh, that kind of does suck when you think about it, you know? Yeah, because they all thought they'd Do you know how depressing it must be? Like, when they hear another story of someone being racism or whatever, and they're and just they're like, like... we've been fighting. We've been still 100 here? years. We're still doing this? Yeah. We're still having the same conversation? Mm. Like, huh? That's crazy when you think about it, you know? I think about it all the time. That's How nuts. race is so arbitrary and it's such a big thing. Why? Till now. Who cares what color someone is? 2024. Who cares? There is a no difference. What a life. What a life. The world is full of people with the tiniest brains. Bro, honestly, and I just hate that we just have to like be surrounded by them. Yeah. Like Twitter is like the best example. Mm. Like you're just surrounded with people. Someone described it as like 
be basically like imagine like all the school sets in one class. Mm. So it's all of these people with different brain capacities, mm. and now we're supposed to have an intellectual conversation. But the thing about Twitter that's gotten worse is that everyone there is so judgmental and angry towards oh, people. Oh God, it's so terrible. But what do you do to contribute? You're on some celebrities net because <laughs> the thing they did, like let's say Billie Eilish, she wore that badge. That's not good enough. What the hell have you done? Donating aside, what do you do? Yeah. But you want to judge someone so harshly and so critically for Every what time. they can do. Every not time. everyone can give an arm and a leg and push as much as you want in like yeah. for revolution because we've seen people do that mm -hmm. and it hasn't worked out. Mm. So I can't burn down my whole house to keep someone else warm. And you know what? That's why you would be more than a hoe <laughs> during the Black Panther scene, okay? I, think I just wanted you to easy No, chat. you would be more than that, okay? You might have a lover, which would be nice, but I think that you would be saying the speeches and stuff. Do you know what I mean? And I telling had a dream. them, yeah, I had a that dream. That in twenty twenty four, yeah, racism didn't exist. Yeah, my brothers and my sisters, yeah, stand strong, stand with strong. Me. Woo! We will move. We will move. No, 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 no. Yeah, I see. What that. is? Who would you be? <sighs> Do you know? I didn't. I was trying to think, and I just don't know, man. I just think every lifetime is just looks bleak. What what was the life that was like? Because obviously, like, see Bridgerton times, right? Mm. It weren't good for black people. But the thing is, it was good for some black people. It wasn't good for some other black people. Do you know what I mean? But when they show it, it's completely different. There, yeah. was, there was black people that owned land, who were wealthy, who had state titles. But when you see it depicted in yeah. shows and movies now, it's not the same. Yeah. Which because, is kind of incorrect. Yeah, because I just feel like, I wonder what it would be like to live in a time, yeah, where, but there just wasn't like, where there was more law, mm. but without the racism. Do you know what I mean? Like, I liked some of the old school things of, like, things being, like, quite structured, you knowing who you're going to marry. Do you know what I mean? And, like, mm. you know, your life is kind of, like, set out for you. Like, I kind of like the idea of that. Not but me now. But then you now. just live before slavery, innit? Or yeah. before England. When did colonization start? This is, and that's it when. It got to be before then. Because I was thinking, I'm talk now I'm having to talk about back, yeah. back, back. Because colonization is Black. what made racism. Yeah, no so one like, really Black. cared as much before. Yeah, so that's what I'm thinking. So I don't know what time. The seventies look lit though. The seventies look like a vibe. They, it look like a vibe. It look like a. When vibe. do they do drugs a lot? Seventies. <laughs> oh yeah, let's I think go the seventies, the sixties, seventies. I want to try some of the original drugs. <laughs> they were just vibe. LSD from the seventies. <laughs> you must have been a high guy. <laughs> Give us some MDMA from the seventies. Thank you. They were I'm trying to feel it. something. <laughs> the time they were like, again. Did they have AIDS then? They said, uh, uh. In they, the 80s, they, they said did. crack cocaine and AIDS. They just said, yeah. No, I think they didn't. But because they were having too much fun, it the was government a wild was like, bring AIDS. Yeah, wrap it up. They was doing orgies. It was crazy everything. time. That was looked like a good time. <laughs> Candy, please. I'm being so serious. <laughs> it looked like a really, really Free crazy to love. time. Bring me to that time. Yeah, I don't know what time. I think maybe I'll just prefer to be where I am now. Yeah. Did you say what family you would want to be in? Martin Luther King with Malcolm X in it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> you want people them? I can see it. Or I'll be real. Mm. But then I feel like rural people have the worst lives. Queen Elizabeth's life was so boring. She couldn't even shag anyone. Mm. She married the same guy, lived that boring ass yeah. life with her corgis in a castle and everyone protecting you. Boring. Yeah. Like maybe someone useful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe Marion. No, Marion Murray had a terrible life. Oh, she, she had, had a, a terrible life. life. She had a good life until they killed her. Nah, she was definitely abused. Yeah, I think so. Who had a good life? I don't know, man. It was tough being a woman back, yeah, a woman back then. Of, like, I was thinking Pam Gray because she has great tits. No, oh, she probably was just... Her, no, but remember that guy was putting cocaine in his um, hoo-hoo and get rotted her coochie? Oh, my God. I didn't know about that. She went out of Richard Pryor. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. All right? She went out of Richard Pryor. He used to put cocaine in her coochie when they had sex. Because she wanted to have children and he didn't want to. Then she ended up infertile. So that's why I can't be her. Okay, that's depressing. I'd be Alyssa Milano. I want to be in Charmed and be very beautiful. Oh, she's Charmed. so beautiful, yeah. Yeah, she's my favorite one. I can't believe my parents let me watch that. Well, because it's witchcraft. Yeah, I, I can't believe to watch your Harry parents Potter. didn't let you watch rich, witchcraft stuff. Who cares? It's not real. My mom mm -hmm. loved that show. Yeah, my mom actually liked Charmed. Yeah, Charmed was a vibe. Did you ever watch Monk? Yeah, I watch Monk. I've been watching it on Netflix again. 
liked it. Yeah. So long ago. I think I tried to rewatch it and it was terrible. No, I don't, I've been enjoying it. Wait, oh, with the autist guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they brought that back. Yeah, yeah, they but I'm watching back. Law and Order, so. Yeah, yeah, they brought it back. It's actually a vibe. What are your views on marriage? It's good. Do you like it? Yeah. You want to get married one day? Yeah. Yeah. I think people should have open marriages. Oh, so those after are your like views. After like five years. So those are your views on no, marriage. No, my views on marriage are great. But yeah, after but your, five I years. I said, what are your views? So that's what you're about to tell me now. Yeah, that after five years, the marriage should be open. You think, really? Why do you think that? So I can date young men whilst I'm married. I think you're capping. I think you're capping. What are your views on marriage? I actually think you're capping. I just don't, you are like such a lover girl. Yeah, I don't think that after five, five years of completely being open with someone, all your walls are down. This is someone knows you, like the back of their hand. Okay. And you're telling me. That you can't kiss a little bit. You want to be with other people. To kiss, yeah. When you're single, you don't even gallivant like that. Yes, I do. No, you don't. She's a liar. Like, you're not that intensely gallivanting. You don't really do single, single. In the time that I've known you, anyway. In the last couple of years, I... I don't want to talk about this on the podcast. Okay. <laughs> when you were younger, though. <laughs> <laughs> when you were younger i think I, marriage is great it's a great institution i still think it should be more traditional where you get more money with something of value from your partner oh we, really yeah when they used to sell women for like goats and sheep that was a good vibe because you was at least getting something do you know what i mean it was like a sign of stability your parents Fair. were poor you'd marry rich you'd have so like, like a marrying good line. more for like status yeah, or like, st- I don't want to say status because status is more amongst the rich folk, but for middle class or poor, it's, it's just for stability. stability and something to say, this is our precious like daughter. We don't want her to suffer. Yeah. So we trust you. And I believe that element for marriage is good. Yeah. Sometimes people marry for love or lust, and I think that element is kind of dumb. Love is great, but what's the love got to do with it? What's we need love? something else. What's love? Yeah. Something else. To, to like keep. hold it together. Yeah, because when you have kids and all that, it's very hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... I think marriage is a beautiful thing. And I think, but I don't think I could do open marriage. No, you can do open anything. No. You're not a freak me. No, I don't. I don't even like, yeah, I don't even like sharing my friends. When you go to events, don't you feel like you want to kiss someone? No, Mm. I don't. I don't even like, like other people when I like one person. Really? If I really like them, I'm not really, it's like something I have to force myself to do. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It doesn't come natural. Oh, I get what you mean. You know what I'm saying? Like when you're like mad in love, it's hard to see other people. Yeah, once I like someone, I'm like, oh, I really like this person. Like that's Mm. the only person I really want to talk to. I don't really want to talk to other people. But I know that obviously the times that we're in, you can't put all your eggs in one basket, especially if if you want. That's not your me and me. Nobody will stone you. Do you know what I mean? Though I just Mm. think obviously, like I said earlier, like boundaries, protecting yourself. Do you know what I mean? I think it's ideal to like talk to other people until it's like official. But when I was single, I would date like two to three men at a time. Yeah, I think just that's to better. see who I liked more. Yeah, you know what I mean, I think that's better because yeah. it balances it out. Like I think if you just date like in the early, early stages, if you're just talking to one person, yeah, but like all your hope is that one heart, person. You just talk to one person, obviously. Yeah, but in the beginning, you're like, I like him, but I is might he like the that, one. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Is he the one? I so really let me just date, date more. Uh, yeah, and I want to kiss this one too. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's why I, I, like, I couldn't do. I say, who's got the best body? Take off your top. You and taking off the top. Like, that's like your vibe today. I love that. You're really in the taking off the top thing. I think so. I went to that JD thing and everyone was models. I was like, yeah. take off your top. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, you're really in the, really in that vibe. Yeah. Yeah, I hear it I'm though. trying to see some baddies. I, listen, I'm not mad at it. That's why I'd be an actress. Oh yes, you did say that. So I you can have a love it. interest. Yeah, I'm only doing love stories and kissing scenes. Rom-coms. I gotta do, don't even bring the calm, just bring the rom. <laughs> I want to do romance. Yeah, but. Are there any romance films? Oh, not really. Not really. Well, they put um the idea of you that's coming. Who's that? Oh, um, With Anne Hathaway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that looks I like it's her. gonna be good. Great hits. Yeah, she's gonna be a she's a great actress. Could you be an actor? Like I only aside from kiss. not what? I literally only want to kiss. I have no interest in acting. It's too laborious. I'd be tired. Really, bro. The set is like twelve hours. Wrap yeah. this up. Yeah, 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 it's long. Do the scene again. Uh, uh-uh. uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Add somebody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's long. It's a long process. I can't lie. Yeah, and you think you got it banging, and then like do it again. I'm not. You I'm got not a great face for it, though. Thank you so much. You would eat. You would eat it up. If they cast me against Austin, I'm ready to act. 
<laughs> no, I'm joking. Do you know that TikTok? I'm joking. No, you said this to me before, and I Uche didn't. Uche knows it. It's so funny. I'm it's just joking. I need to stop making inappropriate guess jokes. We're showing our age difference. It literally was like a TikTok a week ago. It's not yeah, even our age. You know, you just need to live and rot on that app. It's an age thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm a. I'm gonna send it to you. I'm a. I'm a grown adult. I'm joking. You know, a question I've never asked you before mm. since you've been on this pod. Who is Candy? I feel like I had an identity crisis. Do you know who you are? Yeah, wow. Because that crazy. that pause was like you had no idea. You, it was like I asked you something in French. But I feel like whenever people ask me stuff like that, or like, why do you want this job? Or what wakes you up in the morning? I'm like, well, before it was like nothing. Mm. I remember I had this job interview and they were like, what makes you like wake up in the morning? And I was like, nothing. <laughs> I don't want to exist. I'm just like, here, yeah, gonna have a job or not. Yeah. But... I think I'm a little bit better now. Okay. But so who, who is Candy? Who is Candy? Like, what are the ingredients that make up who you are? You put someone ridiculously hot. Yeah. And then to balance that, you give them a ginormous forehead. Step one. <laughs> I was going. Then <laughs> you put someone really funny to balance that, really smart, someone with. Why are you talking ethic. about yourself in third person? Because this is how I process. Okay. You know, I saw this video where someone was like, you know the people who don't have internal monologue? Yeah. Do you have internal monologue? Yeah, because you talk too much. So you definitely, it's for the yappers. Okay. But like, I feel like that's how I process who okay. I am. Okay, cool. And then you just put like, super caring, super nice, but can be very lazy. And yeah, Nigerian. You're not lazy at all, though. I, I am so, if you see my house right now, you see. Yeah, I don't think you're lazy, though. But sometimes I can procrastinate things mm. if I don't enjoy the act. Okay. But apparently that's like a symptom of ADHD. Yeah, yeah. maybe, actually. But it's so hard, like, function as, as like, having ADHD. Mm. But sometimes I'm just like, F it, we've all got to do what we've got to do, innit? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It seems like, because I, I think you work quite hard. Yeah, but could work harder. I feel like you could always work harder. You can always work and harder. And if you say that to yourself, you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to keep pushing yourself yeah, you and keep motivating like, yourself. Come on, man. Do this, do this. You yeah, get yeah. This. Get this work done. Yeah, rather than just being like, oh, it's good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today at the gym was good enough because I didn't have enough time. But but then how do you like pump yourself up? Because I feel like, like whenever me and you talk, like I feel like you're not as in, I feel like you're not, you're hard on yourself, but you're not. Like I think a lot. Mm. I'm always like, oh, I need to do this. I need to do this in my life. I need to do that. And you're very much like, not, uh, you're not thinking about that stuff, but you still get everything done. I just do what I can do and there's there's no point thinking about it. Like, yeah. what is the thought going to do for me? Yeah. Like, when I do have, like, an obsessive moment about something, which I did this week, I just said, from now on, just tell yourself no when the thought comes up because you know there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, and yeah. all it's doing, when I overthink, it distracts me from getting things done. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just like, I do not have the energy to constantly think about a topic over and over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just have to keep saying no to my brain. Yeah. And then just live life. Yeah. Like, you can only do what you can do. And this is it. And I've been struggling a lot this week. I feel like we spoke about it a little bit. But, yeah, I've been having quite strong, obsessive thoughts. Yeah, I hate that. About a particular thing. Mm. And it's been, like, driving me yeah. crazy. Yeah. Do you it know what I mean? It makes you so depressed. It's yeah, like, because you can't, you can't change it, per yeah. se. And it's interesting because I literally, I've, I've been on a search, like, for a therapist, basically. Mm. Which has been so hard to actually find one. But someone finally replied mm. and like she called me and we did like a little 20 minute call. And that 20 minutes, I felt better just mm. after 20 minutes of speaking to her. Because I felt like I just needed someone to just to like. Say it in like a safe space. Yeah, yeah. And just be like, affirm what I was saying, but also say it out loud that I'm kind of being ridiculous. Like she was mm. like, oh, it sounds like you're blaming yourself for da 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 da. And I was like, I am blaming myself. Like, mm. why am I blaming myself? But yeah, it's just really interesting. I hate when I get into that obsessive place of like. Yeah, I feel like I'm having like a midlife, a second midlife crisis a little bit. I feel like midlife crisis isn't a thing. I just have crisis all the time. Yeah. And then I like train my brain to... To be like, it. move on, yeah. crack on. You can wallow for like a certain amount of time, but then after it's like, okay, yeah. but who is this really benefiting? All you're doing... But my favorite thing is to just journal it. Like That's been the thing. Journaling has been like the savior. Yeah. Just write it all out and write then you're like, out. get out of your, get yeah. out. And then it's when, true, yeah. Yeah, when people are like, do you want to talk about it? I'm like, no, I'll just journal it. Yeah, you said that to me this week. Because then I want to read it in a few years, what I said. Like, if yeah. I'm on the phone all the time speaking about how I feel, there's never a time for me to reflect. Mm. But if I wrote it, I can see like the pattern in my behavior over time and then I can change. Yeah, so I'd rather just journal it and know 
how I felt at that period. Mm. And be like, okay, you've done this before. How did you go over it? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, you've put that together so beautifully. Mm. I know, you said that you're not deep. I don't think I'm that deep. That was deep though. Mm. That was quite deep. You were kidnapped in Zimbabwe. Why are you telling me this? What's that? St- you never told me the full story. There's no full story, Ria. My mum told me and I can't remember it. Rule my life without you. Could I even live without you? So what what's your story? Life, what that be? Oh, uh. Do you know that song? Is it because I told you that you can't sing? You've just decided in the middle of this episode to just start singing? No, I always sing like that. But like, is this, do you know what I mean? Like, is this the time? Need you in my arms, need you to hold. It's terrible, by the way. It sound like a tone deaf cat. <laughs> <laughs> I sing all the time. I think singing and music is the joy of my life. If you were to um, be one of those people that perform on the road, do you think that people <laughs> will give you money? If my boobs are out, then yeah. No, not for boobs, for your singing. No. Fair. If they're generous, yes. What would so what if you could get the opportunity to do be on the road and sing for money or do something for money? What would you do? Would you dance? Work. You would twerk. I wear a thong and a bra, <laughs> and I'll shake my hands for money tonight. Get some money. You get very tired. <laughs> yeah, but I would make a lot of money. <laughs> People would be very angry. Club. What? They'll be like nudity on the street. I'm, I'm the pretty sure you get like, This for that. is the type of basket we've been looking and they for. And wouldn't, they wouldn't want to publicly give you money as well. Yeah, they would. They'll be like, what's your, um, do you do any private lessons? They'll be like, transfer quietly. They're not going to want to publicly be going. They don't I, care. I think so. If if anyone could do that, why haven't why have I never seen that? Because it's illegal. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. It's illegal. I'm just saying it's definitely uh, definitely illegal. Public indecency. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Yes. Do you have any regrets in your life? Yeah. Oh. Anyway, this is your last episode. <laughs> Make, <laughs> no, it good. Really. Make it good. Make My it good. My regret, I think giving up blogging a long time ago instead of being like continuous. I saw like Uche's story um, when she was crying and she talked about how it took her 12 to 13 years to like get here. And I just thought there's power in going even when you don't believe what you dream will be achieved. So I regret quitting as easy as I did before. I so wish when I you just say blogging, what do you mean? Like, um, like did you, did you used to have an actual blog? I used to have a YouTube. I had a blog. I had like everything, but then I felt like it's not going to happen. So I need to focus on serious things and like marketing and all that. But then... Was oh, that when you had the job? Yeah, but then I'm thinking I lived at home, mate. Mm. Could have firmed it. You ain't got yeah. no bills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, struggle up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like that, struggle up. So that bas- essentially that means just... Struggle, but yeah, keep going up. If you have like a, a safety net, like mm. parents and no bills, mm. dream big. Mm. You know what I mean, it gets harder when you have to like be responsible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was thinking about that, you know, and I was thinking about my acting classes that like, when I was younger, and I was just thinking like, I was living at home. I mm. really could have gone even harder. I know I had the salon and stuff, but yeah, like, but you I had the like privilege of having a home. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, being the privilege of like having a home, even though like my parents had paid for me to go act in school. Mm. and my parents just got tired when I was still like going to acting classes my parents just felt that they were spending so much Much money money. on me which they were but I just feel like I could have even gone even like harder do you know what I mean Mm. and like really banging out the classes even more but I had to get a job as a waiter yeah but most actors like do that my friend Daisy you know Daisy well we used to be work together Daisy Ridley oh is it yeah you know her because of John yeah yeah Um, she used to work at Abercrombie. Oh, wow. She was a terrible supervisor. Wicked, wicked girl. <laughs> <laughs> she used to always shout at me. She'd be like, stop acting like that. But everyone in Abercrombie was acting. Not that I knew what acting was then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thought they were vibing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And years later, I said, how come they're in that show? Huh? <laughs> Maybe I would literally said, I should have been doing this acting thing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, on the side. I would be where they were. Yeah, 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 yeah. on the side. Because we just did that. You had your side job, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel like when you believe in your passion enough, you can keep pushing, but sometimes it's not easy because it's like, bro, you put a lot and it's not happening. It's not. So happening. I get why people quit, but it takes a lot of resilience. Yeah, and it's so hard to have resilience when you're that young and you're just you tried and something looks like it's gonna happen, then it doesn't happen, and you're mm. just like, oh, disappointment. Maybe it's not for me. Maybe, yeah, yeah. and then everyone's around you like, be normal, do this job, like settle down, and you don't want to be that. Yeah, yeah, the pressure. Yeah, yeah the pressure's a lot. Oh, the pressure to. They keep asking, down. how's it going? 
and you're like, bro, I don't want to talk because it's not gone. It's not gone. Like, actually. that's it's gone nowhere. Don't actually. ask me no more. Don't no, ask me. You ain't seen me like do stuff, so why are you asking? Especially when it comes to acting, yeah, they'll be like, oh, are you, what you say? Oh, I'm an actor. They'll be like, what you been in? Mm, and you're, you're like, like nothing. <laughs> I was in a show in 2002. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't in it for long. Yeah. It's like EastEnders. Like, I wasn't in it for long. Are you in EastEnders? Oh, yeah, you told me. <laughs> yeah. But at least you're in EastEnders. It's better than most people. Like, yeah, I wasn't in it for like... Even small wins are wins. A win is a win. Yeah. So your biggest regret is, like, basically giving up too soon. But you're not yeah. giving up because you're doing it now. Yeah, but I wish I'd, I'd been consistent because I'd be so much further mm -hmm. than, like, I am now. I feel like as humans, we're so hard on ourselves. Because like from the outside looking in, I'm like, she's killing it. Mm. And then for you, you're like, mm, it I, could be been doing, I could be doing. Could have been an actor too. But that used to be my biggest dream. Really? Yeah, I want to act so bad. Wow, I didn't know that. Then I did two music videos and I thought this can't be for me. But you know, music videos and being on set. I mean, it's still being on set, but it's, it is different. Yeah, but it was still on set. And I have to do like, pretend I like someone. Obviously, the guy, like, guy's my friend, but it's like... He was like, will you kiss me in the scenes? I'm like, absolutely not. Yeah, yeah, Lord, yeah. I'm going to kiss you. That's disgusting. <laughs> like, oh, I don't want to do that. Don't touch my body. So like when the camera was on, I'd be like, I'll pretend he's my boyfriend and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then, then after, after I'm like, get your hands off me. <laughs> don't touch me. Disgusting. Don't touch me. Yeah. Have you ever done therapy before? Yeah, I've done bear therapy. They think really? I'm amazing. Yeah. Really? And they're like, you're such a good student and you don't need that much help. Because I've got a lot of accountability skills and I don't like make anyone a villain mm -hmm. and i also don't victimize myself i'm just like very logical and practical with how i think mm -hmm. yeah so i'm like what more therapy do you want from me that's really interesting you know because when i was in therapy she said to me what she like what was kind of said to you that mm. i'm quite logical i'm quite rational but like that was the reason for me to be in therapy mm. because i was too rational so i don't like under i don't acknowledge my feelings because I will rationale why someone does something that they do mm. very quickly. So I was, I'm very logical. But I can acknowledge how I feel without thinking that my feeling is necessarily real. Mm. Sometimes how you feel is just how you feel mm -hmm. and you don't need to act upon it. You just mm. need to take it and put it into the side and understand it and let it go. Mm. And at the same time, a lot of people who I think need therapy are the people who when one person does something bad to them, they make that person the villain in their story mm. rather than seeing that person as a human with their own life, with their own issues and how they treat you might not be about you. It might be more about them. Mm. And it takes more energy to hate someone and like harp on about what they've done than to just let it go and move on with your life. Mm. Let it go. Wow, Candy, you're in your deep bag today. It feels like a jump scare. This is, this is being deep. You're just being so like... I'm very wise. Yeah, but you d you're just being very, like, grounded. I'm very grounded. Because the last time you were here, I think you were just starting your 75 hard. And it's I think... How long ago I haven't been on this course. Yeah, and yeah, I think damn. now at the end of your 75 hard, it's given, like, grounded, awesome. wholesome, you know? Like, you're just given, like, wisdom, which you do all the time, yeah, to be I fair. Yeah, actually give gems all the time. But this is very interesting. Like, people are going to be in for a jump scare. They're going to see your face and think it's going to be, like... <laughs> all the time but you're like no i think your emotions should be this and you shouldn't put make anyone a villain and you should do this and you should do that one thing i'll give you though that i think you're really really good at mm. really good at is when someone tells you something that you may have done that they don't like mm. you don't you change mm. And not in a detriment to who you are, but like in, in accordance to someone's feelings. Like if you think, if someone tells you, oh, you're making me feel like this, and this is how you're making me feel like this, you, would, you wouldn't repeat it. Yeah. And I think that's I'm not very great. defensive. Yeah, you're not really yeah, defensive. Yeah, I feel like defensive is a pointless personality trait. You'd you be defensive for like five minutes. Yeah, then I'm like, what is the point? Is that when we had our argument in Malta? Oh, I felt so bad. But I was being bad and selfish. So. You were being bad, but then you just apologized straight away. And that was like our... Like our first yeah. proper argument, I guess. Because I was like, I am actually being selfish and I have I should have thought about you. Yeah. Yeah, not just put myself first. Yeah. So there's no point arguing against that. Like, your feelings are valid. So yeah. And that's why am I gonna be there like I'm right. In that moment, yeah. That was like, you know, in the movies, yeah, when like the lead characters are like falling in love and then they have this big fight. Mm. And then at the end of the fight, it's like, Oh my god, I love you. Yeah. That was a moment for me. But you'd never get that in real life because everyone's always, whenever people argue, they're never arguing for the relationship, they're arguing for their ego. 
And that's why you lose so many friends and so many partners, because it's like, and that's one thing I learned maybe when I was like 23, and I just thought this is a bad personality trait, mm -hmm. because you will lose a lot of people trying to be right. Yeah, exactly. And that's a fantastic point. But I just want to point out that I just said that I loved you, and you didn't say it back. I didn't hear that. I love you. I too. said it. I said it clearly. They gonna call me a villain on this now. I, no, I said it clearly. I said I love you. And you you said it, it was like an I love you moment. The lead character you used an analogy. Then I am the lead character. Oh, how am I supposed to know that? You should have known in the I story. I tell her I love her every day. One thing about Pisces person now, and he's saying just this. I love you so much. Thank you. I exalt the land that you walk on. Oh You're the God. heir to me. My wow. breath. You sustain me. Jarman. <laughs> <laughs> ruined it I love Bob Marley <laughs> like you watched that film one time and you will not let anyone that rest that man so you know because he's an Aquarius that's why you love him when I watched the film mind you you love the actor yeah I do love the actor I like Bob Marley too when I watched the film I said his ideals are so like revolutionary there's only a few people who think that they can really change the world and that are Aquarius people that is Aquarius people which is grammatically correct and that is Aquarius people. Yeah. yeah. And that is Aquarius people. So I just was like, he has to be one. And I Googled it and he was. And I was like, that makes sense. No one else is this idealistic. Remember when we were sitting in brunch and we were just talking about how, like, I believe that the world can change and people can change and things be different. And our friends were like, no. And I was like, why do I think like Bob Marley? And then I was like, oh, he's an Aquarius. Well, yeah. Yeah. It's true. I have another friend that's really similar and like she feels like she can change the world. And I'm Oprah just, Aquarius. I'm just over here like... Mm. You said everything is set in stone. It and is like, what it is. People can change. But I only know that because I can change. And I do believe that. I hate when people box you in and think that if you're one way, you're going to be like that forever. But, but you have to want to change. Yeah. And I think wanting to change is very hard. And most people don't want to go through the process of like lowering who they think they are mm -hmm. to become who they should be. T. And that is the crisis that I'm kind of going through at the minute. Mm. The crisis I'm going through, and Uche gave really great advice to me actually recently. She called me today, she wasn't happy that um, you're back on the podcast. Yeah, when I told her I'm a recurring host. Yeah, she was like, it's given like, why is she back again? Yeah, And then she said, the why group. is she not back yet? So we're gonna get Uche back guys, because it's given favoritism. And yeah, haters be your best friends. <laughs> Well, she gave me really great advice because I spoke to her this week and I was basically just saying to her that my recent struggle without going too into it is just basically my idea of who I thought I would be now at mm. my age mm. versus like who I am and not really knowing, like having, not knowing who I am now, like who I want to be now. Do you know what I mean? Because it, I'm clashing. So it's me versus me in my head. Mm. So like I'm remembering like what I thought I would be when I was 22 and now I'm in my thirties and it's like, it hasn't really happened. Mm. And when I don't think about it, I'm completely fine. But it's like, I'll be really happy. Then it's like, I hear a voice in my head, like, but you're this age and you don't have this and you don't have that. And it's like, but the, is the thing, why is age so important? I Exactly. And that's been my, discussion with my brain like why is it such a thing but she's because of society it's society but yeah. her advice was what i need to do is think of my age now and ask myself what does this age of rita want for herself mm. and where does this rita see herself as opposed to like the younger version of me because i'm not even that same person anymore do you know what mm. i mean and when I thought about that, I was like, that's really, really deep to just like delete all of that. That's the past. I can't go back to the past. Do you know what I mean? I can't. I'm not there yet. Do you know what I mean? But what does, what do I want for myself? Like truly, truly, truly. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And, and how do you actualize it? Exactly. And it's an ego thing, right? Of like mm. putting the ego down. Like, all right, cool. Let's take away the ego and just think, what do I want to do? Like, how do I want to better myself? Like, do you know what I mean? Mm. But it's so difficult because the voice of your ego be loud as hell. Mm. do you know what I mean taking over my mind so yeah that's been like my recent challenge so hopefully in a couple of weeks on the pod after I go to some therapy sessions you'll be a-okay I'll be a-okay and, and get God that got us and we got us da -da -da -da. we, we gonna, gonna be, be all right. right and get that out we the gonna brain be all right. like lord like it's just a number like I just yeah I don't think there's it I don't think <gasps> age is very important it's not but I it's just 
in my head. It's just the way you've been conditioned, you know? Yeah, but I always thought they were idiots. They yeah. only made that condition so women would marry young in the ages where it's easy to have children rather than having agency, figure out their own life and then having children. Exactly. Because why the hell would you have a child at 21? That's stupid. Okay, it's not it's not stupid. There's some people. My mom said it was stupid because she had a child at 21 and now she's like 50 something and she was like, yeah, what the hell was I doing? Like I didn't live. And then and I was expected to live for someone else. Yeah. So you end up like, I, some people love it, cool. But I feel like if you have a child young, you end up regretting all the things you didn't do. And it can cause like hostilities towards you and the child. Whereas when you're fulfilled and you have the child, you add to them without feeling like it's taken from yeah. you. Yeah. And you, know then you I mean? can really give them the life that yeah, you want to give them. That you want to give them. Yeah. You're happy because you've already done all the things you want to do. You're bored of uh, traveling. You're bored of this. You're bored mm. of that. And you just want to be a mum. Not when your brain is tiny. And then I'll take care of that little rat. Mm -mm. Not that children are rat. I was thinking yeah. of my cat when I said that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kika. How's Kika? Oh, she does this new thing where when I leave the house, she screams at the top of the balcony for me to come home. So she doesn't want me to leave the house anymore. Mind you, you don't like outside. I said, do you want to come? She's like, uh-uh. But you stay. She wants us to stay in the house and rock together. Very silly cat. It's interesting because the way you talk, one would think that your, your cat actually speaks words. But she does speak. You just have to open your brain. Yeah. When I leave, she's like, ah! And that and means like, no. Yeah, because she does that all the time. She's like trying to put her head through the pole thing to get through to me. You can mm. see her trying to get there. Mm. And I'm like, babes, you don't like outside. You so understand? why are you doing this? Because I'm leaving now. Yeah. I can't be, I, even when I'm with you, you're not hugging me or anything. Yeah. You're shouting at me and beating me around and slapping me every five seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I gotta go. I got to go, baby. Like, but that's why I've got spread. Luna. So she can have friends in it. Not that she likes the cat, but. Oh my gosh, guys. We, me and Candy had this discussion recently and it made me so sad because mm. I was asking Candy, like if Kiko has any like friends or has any lovers or anything like that, because I noticed that Kiko is constantly eating. And I was like, <laughs> is Kiko okay? Like, does Kiko have friends? Like, you know, does Kiko have a lover? Like, does Kiko want to experience love at some point in her life? Maybe. And then you said, what did you say to me? I said, she ain't never going to have that. Yeah, and I was like, that's where would they be? There's no one in the house. And that's what I realized. Where do cats make friends? Yeah, but that's why you have to try and introduce them to another cat. So that's why I've got her a friend, basically. Not that I own it. But like, I'll be bringing the other cat over a lot. So she, at least in that day, she'll feel like heard and seen and understood. Yeah. Even if she hates the other cat, she's got something entertaining her in real life. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It will change her dynamic a bit. And maybe like now she's been going into the hallway a little bit more. So maybe she'll start like an outside and yeah. I can take her places. And make some friends. And she can lose some weight. Yeah. She's big as hell. She is. Like, she I'm is. struggling to carry her now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like, we're on a diet. That's her word of the week, diet. Oh, shout don't out, ask for food. Shout out Kiko, man. It's a good cat. Last time you were on the show, I asked you if you are as adult as you think you are. To which you you said that you were. You know, you had all the right things and all of that kind of stuff. I'm very afraid. However, I just feel like, are you as adult as you think you are according to Rita? Because before that was according to the internet. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Now according to me of what I think adulthood is. Okay. That's very interesting. Yeah. The person that asked Wumi if she had insurance for her phone and didn't have insurance. The thing is, yeah, I forgot to give you this warning before we started, yeah. But I'll give it to you now. This is my show, okay? It's my show. And when I ask these questions, it's not for you to ask me back. Do you get it? Yes. Because it's my show. It's okay. not yours. Is that clear to you? Okay. Aye, aye, Captain. Okay, thank you. So... Do you own an air fryer? No, I don't even have a microwave. <laughs> <laughs> I only eat hot pot. So I'm going to get air fryer. I only eat tofu and hot pot. Mm. I don't even eat bread. Mm. Okay. How long does it take you to put your clothes away when you do the washing? Three weeks. The only clothes that I put away are my bedding. Everything else, I just leave it there. I'm not wearing it anyway. Do you know what I mean? Wow. Like, who puts their clothes back? I just look at All it and I walk past. And eventually, if I need to wear it, I just bring it and wear it. But the concept of putting stuff back is arbitrary and boring. Like, I'm not doing that. Oh, wow. This is worse than I thought. Do you have a first aid kit? No. I have plasters, though, from when I smashed my face, remember? I still have them. But you don't have a first aid kit? I don't believe in that. You don't you believe live, in it? No, just put tissue on it. 
Wash your hands. Tissue. What injury would you have that you need a first aid? Well, we all know I had an injury. That one's not real. Week. You are different. If it was me, I'd wash my leg, put some Vaseline and let That's it. You have natural immunity. You have to let your immune system build up. First aid kit. Mm. Put tissue. And if anything else, just put some tape. Do you have any plants? I don't need more responsibility. No. I have, you know, I like dead flowers. Put the flowers, let them die. Beautiful. Wow. Wow. This is tough for me, actually, because you answered these questions worse than I anticipated. <laughs> but I don't have these things. I don't need them. This You're asking ridiculous stuff. Why this is not ridiculous stuff? stuff. Having a first aid kit in your house is standard. If you live, you live. If you die, you die. Don't come to my house. I don't have a first aid kit. There's nothing there. Wow. But I'm sure concierge can give you if you need it. Oh, sorry, I'm concierge. Mind you, you have concierge. <laughs> Look at me. I'm getting concierge. Wow, I'm so cool. Do you not have concierge? You have concierge. What did I tell you about being quiet? <laughs> no, no, what did I no, what did I tell you? I literally just said to you that you're not supposed to ask the questions back. This is your last time on this show. Don't be mean. Okay, that was a little bit mean. Thank you. I'm sorry. It's okay. You did not pass my adulthood test. Yeah, obviously. I never said I was an adult. But I've still got a gift for you. Thank you. Where is it, money? Where is this? Savlon antiseptic <gasps> pain relief gel. Because guys, wow. as an adult, we should be prepared for the just in case anything can happen. That's true. Give me that. You can one day, go forbid, you know, hurt yourself, have an infection. Is the wrong side? have an infection, have something, but at least it's in the house, guys. You should just have plasters, have bandages, have gel, whatever, just in case. So God forbid anything happens, you injure yourself, you go in a cupboard, you do what you need to do and you're done, okay? I have um, antihistamine. There we go. So that's my gift to you. Thank you, this is a perfect gift, very useful. Yeah, very useful, okay? I'll use it for when that cat scratches me again. Do you know what I mean? I'm a useful adult, do you know what I mean? Anyways, guys. I think it's weird. Why not? The deal. This is the same like your foot one. No, mine is deeper. Bigger. Guys, I'm going to put a picture of my cut in this episode. Actually, no, <laughs> maybe it's too vulgar. That's no, let's vote. <laughs> Do you the, think it looked real? The injury is very, it's a very bad injury. Mm. Okay. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching another episode of Faking Adulthood with my co-host, Candy Jo. It's been real. I've been sexy. You know what I mean? See you soon. <laughs> Only for the grown and sexy. As usual, if you did not like my co-host, don't worry. She won't be back. At least not next week. Okay? Relax. So don't let that stop you from coming back. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. And, and when you see me in these streets, just know I'm coming hard. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to say to Joe Biden? <laughs> what do you want to say to Joe Biden? I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. But you know that sound weird.